coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast. Lots of golf headlines from new winners to a friend of the show in contention getting it done and all sorts of COVID drama because why not as we head into men's Olympic golf week. Plus, we're tuned into some random Olympic events, new music to bump on the golf course, and an Apple TV series to tune into. This week's guest, entrepreneur Joe Allen, who created a really cool concept for all those hungry golfers out on the course, just dying for a snack to get right to them. Well, we've got the solution. Plus, we always end with food. And all of it's brought to you by our friends at Active Body. And we're recording this in the afternoon, and I just finished my 2 p.m. stretch mic. I sound like a 78 year old geriatric man when I talk about active body, but I tell I can I, I can tell you honestly, the two o'clock stretch is like a, a, a bookend of my day now. I need it in my life. And thanks to the active five, it keeps me limber in shape and it's a nice add to your routine. It's a quick fitness option for you with the active five unit and active body. Uh, it translates easily right to your phone. You get easy, quick instructions on how to stretch and optimize your muscles quickly. Five to 10 minute workouts. We're talking. This is not a big commitment. Our promo code with active body is COL. So use promo code COL for 20% off anything, including the active five unit. Again, promo code is COL at activebody.com. and welcome to Course of Life, part of the Morning Read Podcast Network. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf and Tosi Snacks. I'm Michael, he's Alex. And Alex, it was uh, the 3M Open at TPC yes. Twin Cities in Minnesota. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of duct tape lying around, uh, as well as a lot of other oh. 3M products. <laughs> well done there. Uh, I just need to throw that in there. Uh, and uh, Cameron Champ, now has more wins than Louis Oostazen and Tony Finau combined on the PGA Tour. What do, we, what do you have to say about that? That's a wonderful little nugget right there. And, and, a, and a couple of deep stab wounds there to Tony Finau's mm, camp mm-hmm. and Louis Oostazen's camp right there with that one. Because, yes, Camp Champ got win number three to surpass both of them combined. And, and Camp Champ's been kind of a guy that's been on our podcast radar you remember we started in the fall of 2018 when he got his first win so he's kind of been on our radar and on the scene as a young guy that hits the ball Mm -hmm. absolutely a mile he had he's had some covid issues with us he's had some back injuries with us he's had an emotional win for his grandfather in front of us so we've seen the evolution of cam champ so it's it's not surprising he, he found the winner's circle again this past sunday yeah, you know, we, I I was just thinking that myself. We talked about him as he was coming into the game those years ago. And I, my memory serves, he's a Vegas native, I believe. Um, yeah, and Aussie, Aussie, Aussie well, as well, too. Mm. Desert golfer that's originally Australian. And um, he is uh, absolutely known for hitting it a mile. But it was the finesse that got it done when he mm-hmm. needed it the most. Things got a little scrappy on the 72nd hole. He had a drive very far left. Uh, interesting set of layups to get him where he needed to. But the bottom line, he had a wedge in his hand and he needed to stick it close and guess what mikey just he stuck it to a foot tournament was over right in that moment it was it was a great win for him like we said his third on tour i i just i i keep seeing his name pop up with someone i want to pick every week and i was like oh no i don't know can't i don't know now we're going to be back in that thing where it's going to be like oh well he's won this season so maybe we should pick him so i know and he's so feast or famine i saw some tweet from somebody undefined about how it's like he doesn't get in the top 10 much but when he does mm-hmm. he has like the highest win percentage uh, of anyone versus their top 10s and wins so uh watch out for him definitely i don't know if it's going to be soon but we'll see he'll pop up when he needs to the, the other young guy that i've been tailing for a while who came so close in my picks on twitter this past week of the 3m open was maverick mcneely boyfriend of olympian danielle kang as well too was over competing in tokyo he's been haunting the leaderboards for a while now i feel like the moment's coming for him he was one back head into sunday but my closest pick uh, could not get it done down the stretch. Yeah, my picks played okay, but all of them outside of the top 15 at the end of the day. Um, that's just that's just the way it is. Some weeks we have we have ones in contention and some weeks we don't. 
Um, yeah, and how about freaking Louis Oosthuizen? Yeah. I mean, this guy. Like you, you are you already dunked on him earlier with that win stat, but he, again, he finishes tied <laughs> for second. Like this is not a repeat. I don't I don't just have some button that said Louis Oosthuizen finished second that I press every week here. He did it again. He 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 finds his way to finish runner up all the time, every time. Um, so I wonder if there's some special bet I can create just for Louis Oosthuizen to finish second and not win because he'll sure cash that a lot. Well, you know, probably as soon as you decide to to do a bet like that, where you're betting on him to be in second is is the week he'll win. So yeah, he'll start winning left and right. Yeah. Of course, that's the it's way true. it goes. But nonetheless, our, our Twitter picks are getting closer. We've each had three wins on the PJ Tour calendar. Uh, we'll tease our thoughts in a little bit for Tokyo action. But I'm at Course of Life One on Twitter, and you are at MWR INC. Let's talk about Tokyo, though, real quick, but not about the golf that's upcoming, but about the golfers who will not be taking part because. COVID is just uh, really okay. running rampant through Tokyo right now. Uh, still John, doing this, aren't we? I mean, Beefy Bryson is out. Uh, I'm really disappointed that Brooks is not the the, the alternate to take over for him. Mm. That would just be, that be, great. be nice. But he was, he was too busy shaking his booty over at the uh, the Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit party. Yeah. I can tell you. Why a good time we're, we're part of the Sports Illustrated family. Why weren't we invited to that? Uh, yes. Very good point. Friends at Morning Green and Sports Illustrated. I think it might have been an address issue with the invite. It, we didn't. I didn't see any emails. So yeah. It must have just gotten lost in the mail or something. Well, so. you know, the mail is so slow these days. We're probably going to get it in another week. So, you know. yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless, I, I, you're right. I would have liked to seen Brooks B. Bryson's fill in. That would have been the, mm-hmm. that's the all time troll in that rivalry. If Brooks Brooks fills in for Brooks C. and then Brooks wins an Olympic medal, that's not to be. Instead, it's going to be Patrick Reed taking his place uh, this week. Captain America. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. This is one of those things where he kind of knew he was going to be first alternate for a week or two. Um, so he's got Ryder Cup experience. He mm-hmm. loves to wear the red, white, and blue. Who says he can't he, get it done and be in contention along with the other three Americans? Too? And he he loves to be in an environment where where he's not loved. And I mean, there's not going <laughs> to be a lot of fans there anyway. But still, I mean, this yeah, is Patrick Reed versus Hideki Matsuyama head to head in front in, fr- in the Japan in Japan and his home country. I will be betting on Patrick Reed in that. And yeah. that's oh, yeah, I would as well. <laughs> uh, are you going to put any money on John Rom? by the way? <laughs> no, that was that. So that was the second shoot to, <laughs> to, to drop was Saturday night while I was at a pool party, enjoying myself watching the Olympics. We find out Bryson's out due to COVID. I wake up Sunday morning and find out John Rom tests positive for COVID <laughs> again. again. This guy has, has done the full COVID roller coaster. And I think he actually got back on the roller coaster I, again this year. Like I can't even keep track uh, of where John Rom's COVID status stands at this point. Did he have so much fun the first time that he wanted to go again? I mean, this doesn't make any sense to me. I don't. I'm I'm confused about whether he's even been vaccinated. Which there are these very rare cases of people getting it after they've been vaccinated. Basically, I just I just need to know how are you not being super careful. For the Olympics, I mean, I I understand maybe for the memorial, you weren't as careful as you should have been. This is the (laughs) Olympics. You need to be at the the right place at the right time in order to qualify and play in the Olympics. Then you need to be even more at the top of your game in order to win the Olympics because it only comes around every four years. And John Rahm is at that place. And now he's not going to be able to cash in. Yeah, I don't know. This is either some just horrible decision making on his part or the worst COVID tests in the world have all been given to John Rahm and nobody else on the planet. Uh, Those are the only things I can come up with because this is truly a mystery at this point, how he keeps uh, testing positive like this. But nonetheless, yeah, his Olympic journey is over just like that. And he came out again, a lot of humility for him to put that message out hours after, you know, again, taking accountability just the way he did a memorial. Uh, Does it lead us to believe that we're going to get another John Rahm review? performance is he going to come back and win the fedex cup in a month or something like that could, all i know yeah. is I'm, I'm sure this is just more fuel to the fire for him moving forward i mean i think i'd rather win a gold medal than win the fedex cup i know you know I think 20, so, but don't say that too loudly to commissioner how, jay monahan he would hate I, to hear that however many millions of dollars it is now by winning the fedex cup is great and all but you only can you know winning an olympic gold medal is pretty pretty amazing so yeah. So obviously COVID hit the headlines right there. Hopefully no more ugly positives from the golf world specifically for this week's competition and the rest of the athletes over there. But we'll, we'll touch on our picks in a little bit. Hey, also, this was uh, a major championship week for the LPGA. They had the Evian championship out in France uh, and and just 
typical major championship week out there um, yeah, in, it's major. in a great, you know, over there in Europe. I, I don't, I don't know why we don't have more PGA tour events in France or just anywhere it in Europe. It is but, so you know. beautiful over there. Mm-hmm. There was a few select influencers and you probably Paul, follow them. If you're in the golf world listening at home that were over there to make the trip and our friend and last week's guest, Ryan Ballingy commented, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I need to add the Evian championship to my bucket list. Cause it just looks like a week long fancy party. Like, like there, I'm talking like, past appetizers on like gold plates, Mike, and and like champagne fountains at the Evian Championship as we overlook the water in south of France. It's just a beautiful setting there. And uh, Min Woo Lee winning, Min Ji Lee winning now. So impressive performance from her as well too in the fifth major. But yeah, just a a really cool, nice spectacle for for not only golf fans, but geography fans as well. But between the Tour de France and the Evian Championship, I've gotten gotten some great visuals from France in the last month or so. Yeah, you know, I'd love to go visit there. We're going to have to put together a, uh, a course of life road trip. We're going to start yeah. saving all the money. We're going to do it first class. So we got to start saving about like $50,000 to make this happen. Yeah. So, so on that note, it's going to start either at a tournament really close to you or really close to me. Baby steps yep. there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen. Speaking of baby steps, uh, let's talk about Dylan Wu. Um, Past yes, guest this on this is podcast. Our right here. This one made yeah. the yeah. last week, actually. Yeah. Uh, right. Dylan will pass guest on the podcast uh, from a couple, couple years ago. He was one of one of our when I'm, I'm forgetting when we had him on. Actually, he was uh, a year or two ago, though, and uh, been battling it yeah, on the corner. Tour. Of 2021, uh, 2020. This is early, early COVID times when we had Dylan on. It was the corn ferry break. Um, we were talking like to so him about ago, his goals for the super season, which mm-hmm. was like uh, forever ago. Yeah, I know. But it was it was really cool to get his perspective as a guy fresh out of college, working his way through the mini tours and getting to the Corn Ferry Tour status that he had. Uh, so so to see where he's climbed in the last year, year and a half, we've stayed in touch with him. Love following his journey, him and his fiance, Margaret. Love hitting the road and going to all the coolest restaurants in town. So they're a really fun follow on social as well. And it's been neat to see this journey get to this point. He's had a lot of amazing finishes but hasn't capped it with that win. He finally did so on Saturday, this win being massive because it essentially secured his PJ Tour card for the next season, which is extremely important. Yeah, 27 under par to take the W. And as he's walking off the green, he's uh, going up to his guard and saying like, hey, we're headed to the PGA Tour. So congrats to Dylan Wu. This is, we're going to have to get him back on the podcast now. We, we yeah, get definitely. I, I've extended some messages his way and we're definitely talking right now. I know his schedule is going to be real busy with talking to everyone and celebrating this week, but we'll make a point to have him on again. And it's going to be really cool to follow. You know, we, we've got the stable of young golfers that we've had on the podcast over the past two, two and a half years. And we're always waiting for them to have breakthrough moments like this. And it's really exciting to kind of see one of our own and a friend of the show uh, get to this next level that we talked about him with before to see these dreams really realize and have them come true on this time frame. It's exciting for Dylan and, and I, I wish nothing but the the best of luck and success to him. And, and we'll be for sure following all his journey on the big tour as well. Let's turn our attention to Tokyo for reals now because the Olympic golf competition starts on Thursday. Uh, and that means that everyone other than John Rahm and Bryson get a chance at a gold medal. Uh, let's talk about this. Yeah. Let's talk about who's out there in the field and who we think is going to going to take a medal around their neck. Yeah, obviously. So let's just start with Americans. First of all, uh, let's just line them all up and see who we like the most of the four. Uh, Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, and Justin Thomas are your three lead favorites at seven to one and nine to one respectively. And then Patrick Reed hopping in as the fourth American. Uh, just on that mini list, if you're asking me to pick one name, it's going to be really hard for me to pick against Colin Morikawa right now. Yeah, the, the guy's form is absolutely amazing in terms of Americans out of those four names. Uh, he seems to be already pretty well adjusted has gotten some good practice time ahead at the olympic venue um there's no reason to believe why a a ball striker like him can't put himself in contention for a medal and down the stretch if it's tight and he needs a couple putts to win uh, that's a guy i'm banking on to get it done so out of the americans i know it's a a homer favorite pick but i like more cow's chances to win the gold and just you know morikawa has shown that the first time he's in a tournament he seems to do really really well so right exactly you know Just going off that intangible, I think you got to say he's got a really good chance as well. Uh, And of course, it's going to be a loaded field with the top players from each of their countries out there. I know you are all over Sebastian Munoz, though. 
Oh, yes. 80 to 1. Sebastian Munoz and our friend of the show, Teo Gomez, as well, representing Colombia. Only golfer representing Colombia. You know, he's got mm-hmm. the weight of the country on his shoulders, but this is his first appearance. Didn't qualify for Rio, but very exciting to see how he does as well, too. The other storyline we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, which we've got to mention one more time, are South Koreans the playing yeah. play the most important term of their life coming up here. For anyone who doesn't know, it's Sung J.M. and Siwoo Kim, both of them if they do medal in the Olympic Games, actually get to be pardoned from a mandatory military service of two years that is required for South Korean adult males. So this is by all means, maybe one of the most important tournaments of their life and career because it gets them out of that and allows them to keep playing professionally. So they may be a more to lose or gain than anyone else. So I'm definitely going to have my eyes and probably my money on the both of them to play well too. Yes, indeed. Uh, looking through the list, of course, our full picks will be out on Twitter on Wednesday evening. Um, if you had to pick a sleeper out of this list, who do you think has a chance? Because it really it does feel top heavy at the same time. But pick a sleeper for me. It does. So I'll go a little way down and get to Tommy Fleetwood, my guy, mm-hmm. 28 to one, um, representing the flow, the locks, the wonderful hair. <laughs> Again, a guy that we still are waiting on to have that big career-defining moment. What better spot than to do it here and notch an Olympic gold medal? Maybe maybe he hasn't gotten the major championship first. Maybe this is his major if he gets gold this week. So I'm definitely going to have a dollar on Tommy Fleetwood. And if you want to go way down, if you want to go off the board, Mike, way down the list and you want to hit the lottery, I'm going to be throwing a dollar on Sepp Straka, PGA Tour member uh, that's played a lot recently. Hasn't had a ton of form, but he's playing a lot of decent golf and has been playing weekends. Um, I've picked him a few times in my past Twitter picks at Course of Life 1 for PGA Tour events. But if you want a flyer and you want to throw a dollar on someone uh, that may shock the world, then, then throw a dollar there. All right. Our full picks will be out on Twitter on Wednesday. So keep an eye there and we'll recap everything that happens in that, that Olympic golf uh, on next week's episode. Yeah, excited let's, for it. Uh, let's switch over to tuned in where we talk about what we're tuning into outside of the world of sports. Uh, for me, actually, I, I found something new on Apple TV, which I don't think has a ton of content outside of Ted Lasso. BT right, Dub yeah. season two out now. I'm going to start watching season two of Ted Lasso. Uh, and I found this new show called Mythic Quest. Um, actually, now in season two on Apple TV, it's by the guys who did Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, OK. Um, right. Which I've never really watched. I've seen bits and pieces of, but it, it, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is almost too stupid for me. Uh, but Mythic Quest has the right amount of stupid in it. It's a little bit more like a Brooklyn Nine-Nine vibe. And it's quite funny, really easy to just kind of binge. I already finished season one. I'm going to be starting season two now. So, Yeah, the title is a little deceiving, too. I'm a fan of both Always Sunny and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So yeah. that could get my attention. Well, this is about a dysfunctional workplace uh, for a um, massive online multiplayer role-playing game. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Video yeah. game drama, always yes. fun. It's always yes. fun. <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Something that isn't video game, but very much real life. And it looks like a video game sometime is what watching the Olympic athletes right now. It's, it's Olympics time here. Once every four years, like I mentioned, it comes around. So I'm seeing a lot of random sports that I would never in a million years tune into. Uh, a couple of the notable ones, Mike, they're now doing a slalom canoe olympic event i don't know if you've mm. laid your eyes on this but I it's haven't. basically like white water rafting but right in the middle of tokyo it's quite a sight to be seen i'm gonna have to tune into it i i haven't really tried to watch too much yet i've been busy with the work schedule and everything else going on and plus i gotta figure out how to get it without having cable and not having to pay for anything yeah so it's all um, nbcolympics.com and peacock have got you covered for most of the stuff one of the annoying things that did happen sunday morning i had to go to the illegal stream because they made you go to peacock premium for the usa basketball game against france that was actually absolutely not happening for me but uh, nonetheless uh, spoiler by the way they lost so they did. It was it was not a good start. The, the early spoilers are U.S. women's soccer. Got to get it together when it gets to knockout play. Same with the U.S. men's basketball team. Women basketball looking great. I watched some good swimming over the past weekend, but it's fun uh, to check out uh, some new sports I, w- I wouldn't normally 
uh, watch. So I've been tuned into the Olympics. One other guy I got to shout out is some new golf music that all our golfers can bump the next time they're on the golf course. A couple of influencers and hip hop artists, Rory Black, Rory and Roger Steele came out with a to- song called Stick Talk. It's a banger. So if you're into golf music, you like some funny golf lyrics and you like the personalities of those two guys, definitely check that out. Some fun new golf music to, uh, to bump in, in the golf cart next to, uh, next to your Desert Fox phone caddy. How's that sound? I love it. I love it. The other thing you'd be bumping on your Desert Fox phone caddy is this whole podcast and this next interview, uh, which we'll get into right now because Alex, we're, we're golfers and we love golf course food and snacks. We know the importance of having good food on the course. Absolutely. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's such a mixed bag. And we talked about like, whenever you get to a golf course that maybe you're not familiar with, you never quite know what the food situation is going to be, when you can get it, what they have to offer, how you can get it. And, uh, the guy that we talked to this week, this week's guest, Joe has a really, really cool concept that he came up with to help alleviate a lot of those problems. That's right. Joe Allen is the creator of the two-year cart app for golfers and golf courses nationwide. And uh, whenever I just start thinking about food in general, I get hungry, but good food on a golf course just makes me makes me a little hungrier. Yes, that's what we uh, do. As we say in our other podcast, grab a snack for this conversation. Yes, as well. You will need that. But first, before we get into, into this interview with Joe Allen, we want to let you know that it is brought to you by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, the makers of the phone caddy. The phone caddy lets you strap your phone onto the side of your golf cart so easy and view and use all day long. You don't have to fumble around in dark spaces of your golf cart, dropping your phone on the seat, or even worse, onto the grass as you drive away. The phone caddy keeps you locked in safely so you can stay locked into your round. It'll be the talk of your foursome, and it's a great gift for any golfer in your life. And for our listeners, you can save 10% off your purchase of the phone caddy with the promo code Course of Life. It comes in a range of colors, and you can even show your support with their patriotic line. So head on over to DesertFoxGolf.com to get your phone caddy. And don't forget to use the promo code Course of Life to save 10%. Again, that's promo code Course of Life at DesertFoxGolf.com. Next up on the tee, we've got an entrepreneur who has created an ingenious concept, a whole set of concepts, actually, for sports centers and businesses to get food to their hungry customers. I love the sound of that. It's the founder of To Your LLC, Joe Allen, joining the Course of Life. Joe, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, brother. How are you today? Doing fantastic. Let's talk. I'm curious, whenever I get to meet entrepreneurs and people who create great ideas like what you've got coming with your apps and brands rolling out very soon here, has your background always been entrepreneurial and trying to create these concepts or or what's your kind of professional background? You know, it's funny because I've always had the mindset where it was difficult for me to work for someone else because I always felt that I knew a lot more than <laughs> I figured, my yeah. boss or whoever it was. So it would just be extremely frustrating because the ideas that I would take to them, they would implement, and then I would never get the credit for it. I would never reap the benefits. Obviously, they would get you know the bonuses and various different things for increasing their revenue, and I would just get a you know good job pat on the back. Um, so it kind of became one of those obsessions when I was about 21 that I wanted to venture out, do everything on my own, be my own boss, and uh, just figure out different ways to um, use my expertise to become successful. Very cool. There's a lot of concepts that you're putting out really soon. We'll get into a couple of them, basically surrounding a couple of my favorite sport and activities, that being bowling and golf. So I'm curious between the two, uh, what came first for you in life? Did you bowl first as a kid or pick up a golf club? You know, what's funny is I've actually never golfed in my entire life. I've done top golf before, but I've never actually physically golfed. Um, Love that. Wow. So ranges exclusively. You haven't done the full round yet. No, not at all. I'm one of those kind of people. um, I'm too competitive. And it's one of those to where I'm at, you know, the stage where I I absolutely hate losing. Um, I I, I just can't deal with it. So I kind of stick to what I know. Bowling, I used to go as a kid um, with my stepdad and my brother and my mom after church. We started that when I was about seven years old. So bowling's always been um, a huge part of my life. 
um, to be able to get out on the lanes, have some fun with the family, because you, I mean, you don't have that many competitive people who are out there like that. If you're on the golf course, you're a whole lot more competitive. You very rarely have people who are out there just to swing a club. Um, with bowling, I mean, you can add bumpers, you can add stuff like that on the yes. course. You can't add bumpers. You can't make the ball, you know, bounce this way, bounce that way when you, you know, hit it wrong. So it's a lot more patience and uh, I, that I just don't have for, for golf. That's OK. You're a strong enough man to admit it. So I appreciate that. That's good. good yeah, stuff. Sure. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background, because I know you have some background in kind of event planning within the world of sports, which led you to launching these brands and we'll get into to your lane and, and to your cart in a moment but just tell me kind of about your background and ha- how these ideas came to be originally yeah so it's cool so with strike your kids uh we're a national uh 501 c3 nonprofit organization um that partners over 125 professional athletes with benefiting youth organizations so it's really neat um we do these big events with 200 250 bowlers 144 golfers but the main thing that we noticed um, was that so many people had to leave the lanes to go order food and they were missing out on the athletes, missing out on the event. And I mean, it just became a passion to say, OK, how can we figure out a way to create an app that really allows customers, have guests to be able to enjoy their experience? So once the pandemic hit and events were all put on hold, then I was able to really just to dive in and devote all my time and all my energy into the apps. So, you know, even though the pandemic crushed the event side of things for us. It allowed us to be able to finally explore all the options that we were looking at um, with the apps and really expand on them. Yeah. And those concepts are interesting. Myself who was out golfing a lot, you know, the, the 19th hole clubhouse food and golf courses have some amazing eats and bowling alleys have some really cool food options as well too. Every place is so different and new unique. So, so tell me what your apps are kind of doing to help highlight, you know, how you unique these places are and, and show off the menus that these places have to offer. So it's cool. Their entire, it, it, it's similar to a DoorDash, but without the delivery of an outside food. So right. everything comes specifically from their course. So whether you're on hole one or you're on hole 18, you're able to order and have it delivered directly to your cart. So whatever you see on the menu that they provide to us, we're actually implemented into the app. So you're able to order it at a extremely low cost. Um, if you want to pick it up on the turn, it's just 99 cent service fee. Um, or if you want to play and stay, you can have it delivered to your, um, to your cart. Um, for a dollar ninety nine, no matter your order size. So regardless oh, if it's a two hundred dollar order or a hundred dollar order, your service fee will still only be a dollar ninety nine. I love that. It's totally worth the cost right there. So I'm I'm playing this out in my head as a golfer, and all the golfers are right now. Typically, it's one of those scenarios where you know you got to call in at just the right moment on the ninth tee if you want to get that food and scramble over to ten. You know, there's usually not a, a menu available, or or maybe you're getting some real fast like grab and go option. Talk to me about kind of like what people are able to see on the app that's going to make them want to buy. You know, are they going to have pictures and, and what are parts of the menu that maybe golfers are going to get to see that they wouldn't have normally thought they could have ordered when they're on the course? Absolutely. They'll be able to see everything. Um, so you'll have your beverages. You'll actually be able to order alcohol. So you, you'll opt in to the over 21 um, uh, pop up that appears and basically just let you know, hey, just show your ID um, to the person is delivering the food and drinks to you so you'll you can have your beer and your burger whatever it is so would not have to worry about waiting for the car girl um you'll be able to uh, modify everything similar to a uber eats um so if you're looking for a burger and you want to add bacon you want no lettuce whatever it is um you can add that into your instructions um but yeah you'll be able to see the whole complete menu versus the limited grab a sandwich and go type menu, but you can order your burger, order your fries with it, your soft drink. Um, and if you want something dessert, all of that will be available uh, with the menu to be able to have it delivered to you. That's a cool concept. I'm thinking of a lot of foods that I, I may not necessarily have the courage to order when I'm out on the course, but if I had an app like that where I, where I knew I could order it correctly and have it brought right out to me, 
would make the experience a lot more cooler for sure. Love that. So it's to your cart on the golf end, to your lane on the bowling end. Very cool right. stuff. In terms of the the business plan for the app specifically, when we're talking about getting these food delivery apps out to bowling alleys and golf courses, what's the business plan from here and how do you guys kind of grow the reach? So it's cool. So we actually have done our, our business model a lot different. Um, we actually... Um, we're giving the bowling centers and the golf courses 100% of their revenue. Um, we know the pandemic crushed a lot of these venues. So our biggest thing as a token of our appreciation to, you know, these businesses, um, that are typically mom and pop ran, you know, the everyday worker, just like me and you, um, to be able to get back on their feet. So with that 100%, it allows them to, to keep all the revenue, but increase it, um, with the added app. Um, our money literally is only made on the um, service and the delivery fee. So we are more focused on the golf course and the bowling center for them to be able to really get back on their feet and, you know, continue to provide a great service to all their customers. Love that. I was wondering, cause I've been in that industry before and there's a lot of services that'll take some of that precious profit and, and take a cut of their own inside of the, the check itself. It's cool to see that you guys are working off the service fees and helping out the, the, the industry that's definitely in need for service. So again, it's Joe Allen. He's the founder of to your LLC. You can check out the number to your lane, to your cart. All that is, is coming soon. Um, I'm curious. I, I wanted to ask about your golf game. So I know you've never set foot and played a full round before but uh at top golf what, what, what's your go-to club and what do you like to hit the most you know what's funny is have you heard of mike dobbin before i've heard the name yes mm-hmm. so he was the he's a world record holder for the longest drive okay he's yes. actually a great friend of mine so it's uh it, it's kind of embarrassing because i the only time i've been really to top golf is with him so we've <laughs> gone great. he's literally had so, i mean th- there's been a couple times where the ball literally has died like it exploded one of the balls exploded as it got to like the fence. Like you just literally saw it like deflate in the air. Um, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, but club wise, I don't really, I don't really have one. I, I, I aim for, I aim for the targets more. M- most people are just trying to blast it out of this world, but I'm actually trying to collect points and trying to get a W. Like I said, I'm so competitive to where, yes. you know, whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to win. So I don't really focus on, you know, what club this, what I just figure out, you know, if, if it's going to hit it hard enough for me to get to the targeted spot, then that's what I need to use. But I'm a really funny golfer on that aspect. Of that's it. OK. Sometimes just point and shoot and don't think about it too much exactly. is a good strategy. Exactly. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, man. And those long drive uh, competitors, we've had a few of them on both male and female on the show. They are the real deal and they will put up numbers and stats and swing speeds that will just absolutely blow your mind. So it's cool. You get to see that up close. Oh yeah. He, he's a, he's incredible. And, it, and it's even more mind blowing. Cause he's like, he's like six, six, like two eighty. So when he hits it, it just like, you just see the ball literally crying. It, 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 <laughs> it's incredible. Very awesome. Again, Joe Allen founder to your LLC joining us. I'm curious um, for the purposes of to your cart, you know, wh- where do you guys think you're going to see the most success? Um, is this going to be primarily U.S. only? Are we looking at specific golf markets? Are you looking at, you know, different types of golf businesses well, from a golf perspective? Kind of what's the goal and, and where are you looking at the most success? Uh, nationwide, yeah, for sure. So we're looking at pretty much um, just expanding really quickly once we actually get up and fully launched and going. And it's just going to be an aggressive market to really um, reach out to every golf course in the United States to see what system they currently have in place, how we can enhance it, or even if they already have, you know, something good in place to be able to, you know, what network do they have that we could potentially reach out to, to be able to, to reach out to more customers and really expand our base. But I mean, I think the growth and the potential for this is just going to be incredible once we are uh, fully launching it again. Love it. Again, it's sports businesses and centers giving you the opportunity to get food delivered right to you on the tee at the alley so you don't have to go anywhere. It's a super cool concept. Joe Allen from To Your LLC. Looking forward to following the journey and seeing where this takes these industries. And thanks again for hopping on the Course of Life. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me.
And we're back. Great chat there with Joe Allen. $2 to get food delivered to you on the course from the clubhouse. That is a steal. I feel I, yeah, like. That is totally worth it for anyone who knows how inconvenient that moment can be, especially if you're playing a nice round. You know, you, you never know mm-hmm. what to do if you're like playing decent golf through nine holes and you're like, oh, man, what do I do right now? Do I go inside? Do I get the snack? Yeah. Do I just keep it rolling and focus? You know, just, I, I love the convenience of this service. And like we said, he's got several other concepts launching that we're going to be promoting as well, too, on upcoming episodes. Uh, check out our Always End With Food episode dropping later this week where we talk some bowling alley food yep. as well and to your lane, another fun concept that Joe helped create. Uh, so, yeah, enjoyed hearing from an entrepreneur that's, that's bringing a, a much-needed surface to golfers and if you like that uh interview with joe plus you know everything else we do here go ahead and subscribe on your podcast app hit that uh hit that like button uh follow us on the socials uh leave us a review a rating um and if you if you don't like us um then you should, you know, not play golf or go bowling or that too. Um, we don't watch want you to go for it. Also, just reevaluate no. yourself because you've gotten pretty far into this episode mm-hmm. for someone who yeah. doesn't like us, quote unquote. So it's, true. it's, in, it's an interesting stance by listening to all this. But it's true. Uh, but now we're going to not talk golf. We're going to, um, as one of our uh, callers once back when we were at Quinnipiac told us, uh, golf is for the French. So let's talk some right. American football instead. <laughs> yes, right. and, and you don't uh, mean soccer. You mean actual football, no, right? I mean, I mean, okay. real American football <laughs> that really is never played with the foot. So... Let's talk about let's talk about that because uh, your Patriots got a QB battle beginning. It's training camp week. Who's it going to be, Cam or Mac? Who you got? It here? is. Yeah, this is Hope Springs eternal moment right here. Every NFL team and fan thinks they have a chance at this moment in the season. You see your quarterback throwing to your wide receiver, who's covered by absolutely no one, and you say, "Wow, my quarterback and wide receiver look great playing against thin air." This this will definitely work for the next five months against NFL right. defenses. So so all that optimism is garnered right now. And you mentioned I've got a QB battle between the rookie Mac Jones and Cam Newton. The early talk, the early murmurings from Foxborough, well, I don't know if Cam Newton has it and he's not the same as he was. If he's not the same as he was last year, then I definitely want to move on from him because that was horrible. Uh, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, I'm following all of the gossip right now from Foxborough and things officially get going when you all hear this Wednesday morning. Uh, so it's officially training camp gossip season. And I, I know you don't quite maybe have as much to look forward to on the New York Giants side, but we can at least fake maybe a little bit of optimism, right? A tiny uh, bit? You know, I may not have a QB battle brewing. Daniel Jones is my quarterback. I say yes, that yes. with not a lot of happiness. Um, however, um, I, I do think there's a great potential for my team to have almost as many wins as your team this year. That could be, yes. And, and that really is only going to take like seven or eight, to be honest. And we're, now, we're, we're talking 17 games now. Forget, we, we have to true. adjust our brains because we're on 17 game schedules now. Um, the, 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 the wrecking ball for you that, that's inevitable that needs to be discussed is – you do now have Jason Garrett as your head coach, which means mm-hmm. that that you actually could be competitive and he will rope you into thinking that you've got a competitive team. And then he, he's going to rip your heart out with some abhorrent coaching decision at the worst possible time. So you've also got that look to look forward to this fall as well. I'm uh, already looking forward to... Um, I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, uh, polo season. I'm looking forward to polo season. I'm right. s- you keep switching sports on me. But keep it's switching polo. sports. Okay. Right, well, yeah. we're going to polo. Um, <laughs> Because let's 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 talk baseball. I'm looking forward to polo season because uh, the Yankee season is done over completely. They they suck. Yes. They're the worst team in the I majors. I did jinx your no and took a win away from you on Sunday. That was fun. Just yep. atrocious. Um, but what I really want to talk about baseball. Is I want to talk about the new Cleveland Guardians. They have a brand yeah. This came name. out of nowhere. I was not ready for this at all. Were you? Well, this was this was in the talks for a while. The the former Cleveland Indians had already been slowly taking away the Indian logo. They weren't using Chief Wahoo anymore. They were using the C on every, all of their branding. And now right. they've really mm-hmm. made it official. They moved, took the final step and have now rebranded as the Cleveland Guardians. It's incredible how easy it is to rename your team to something specific as opposed to the Washington football team that just can't figure out anything. So... 
Yeah, you would think they would have figured that out a little bit sooner over mm-hmm. there in the NFL. Um, I, I do shout out the the marketing department that came up with this new team name uh, yeah. because they quite literally just chopped off the IN uh, from all, all of their team name stuff and just added mm-hmm. G-U-A-R instead. I, I love that. It's it's like a it's it's just like a really cheap restaurant mm-hmm. technique technique to change your name uh, by one letter or something like that. I, I appreciated that move by them. I don't really understand. Apparently, there's some sort of local monument connection to the word guardian in Cleveland. The one that I think they missed out on, Mike, is something to do with rock. Cleveland rocks, rock and roll, mm. something. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is right there, like right down the street from the stadium. Yeah. I just think there was a missed opportunity with that nickname. Cleveland rocks could have been a pr- pretty hard name for the baseball it would, team. It would have been good. I, I like Guardians. I think that's a good team name. I like most of their logos. I'm not a big fan of the ball with the wings off the back of it. That's I'm not as big a fan of that one. And I reached out to my friend who is a uh, Cleveland fan, and he said he likes it. He's a fan of, fan of the new name and the new logo. So the funny the funny go. tweet I saw is the Cleveland Guardians logo looks like a previously pre-created 2004 Yahoo Fantasy Baseball team logo that you would just mm. pick like out of a list of defaults. It looks very much like that. If you know, you know. So shout out to the Cleveland I, Guardians I and a new name. I can see that. Um, but you know what? For now, let's leave baseball behind and let's hashtag always in with the food. Yes, brought to you by our friends at Tosi Bites, Tosi Snacks. We love them. We love you. Our promo code is COL20 for 20% off. Or just head to Tosi.com slash COL. Check out all their flavors of the perfect golf snack, the one that's crunchy, delicious, and shockingly good for you, including their new flavor, which I wanted to highlight this week. Mm. It's a play on kind of what they've already done. They didn't reach too far, but they did it just right. It's the almond dark chocolate sea salt. Toasty bite, Mike. And I, I like this because almond and chocolate is just a tried and true classic combo. Mm-hmm. When you add that little tinge of the sea salt on there, it just gives it that little bit of extra flavor that, that I just absolutely love. And it sounds like a great addition to my, my 10th tea snack. Yeah, you know, it's incredible what a little bit of sea salt does for something. Just a little bit right on top. So you get that little bit extra hit of salt flavor to something. It's just, it just takes things to the next level. A lot of times. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite adventurous enough to sprinkle in salt on chocolate based desserts that I make like that. But shout out to Tosi for just doing us doing it for us and creating a great snack. So so check out Tosi Bites and especially that that new flavor, almond dark chocolate sea salt. Hey, you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago when I talked about how uh, the wife and I had gone down to Jacksonville and we went to Trader Joe's and we got some mochi and she she tried it and she didn't like it. You remember this? Yeah, I just straight up didn't understand what mochi was and I kind of needed you to walk me through it and explain yeah. what it was actually. It's I mean, it is so mochi ice cream at least mochi is a is a glutinous rice dough uh mochi ice cream is you're taking that glutinous rice dough and you're wrapping it around ice cream um so you get this really chewy pillowy chewy exterior in the mochi and you're getting nice creamy cold ice cream in the middle okay um and the people for my mochi actually reached out to me um because they heard this and they wanted to send me some mochi for me and the wife to try and see if uh see if the wife liked it a little more. Yeah, in um, case you can tell we're ballers. Yeah. So this is, is yeah. why we're getting these you know shipments of amazing products like this. So we do thank yeah. my mochi and the team there. And, and now obviously the, the question is I saw a little clip. You can check out COL podcast on Instagram, but yeah thoughts overall what's the main review for you so overall i thought it was really good uh so they sent me three flavors they sent uh dolce de leche strawberry and um s'mores um i thought the s'mores was the best of the bunch really really good cinnamon flavor tasted great uh i had the wife try the s'mores because she doesn't like strawberry and she's not a big fan of caramel and um As she said, unlike when she had the Trader Joe's mochi ice cream, where she took a small bite and then immediately handed it back to me and and shook her head and said no, she ate the whole piece and she said it was good and she would have more. There you go. I mean, that's the ultimate feedback. That is the ultimate feedback. (laughs) Um, And uh, and again, we're getting nothing out of my mochi. I'd love to work with them. I tried the product. (laughs) I think it's great. Let's talk about it. Um, But this is not a paid advertisement or endorsement in any way. They just decided to send me some stuff and we we went ahead and tried it and it was really good. It's a little expensive at the grocery store. I actually saw it at my local Publix today 
and it's like almost six bucks for a box. So it's a little on the pricey side, maybe. Oh, but man, I, if only there was a way to get some sort of promotional code going. I you know, know right? Um, so <laughs> my mochi, get, you know, you got my email now. You know how to get in touch with me. So let's talk about this. And let's thank make you it for introducing myself and the audience to mochi yeah, as well, too. I don't, I don't think you realize, you know, how few people may actually know what that is. So that's we're what here, we're here to do is educate when we can. I'm here to educate and broaden horizons. <laughs> <laughs> through uh, bites of pillowy goodness, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap on this week's Course of Life. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Also, check out Always End with Food later this week, dropping on Friday. Thank you for tuning in and have a good week. <laughs>